At the Broadway Pier, we boarded the 80-year-old racing yacht, the Invader, for our taste of California gray whale watching, San Diego style. We took the morning watch and were casting off by 930. With a lot of luck, one can see a gray or two from the shoreline, but to get the best possible view, it's best to take to the sea. It took us about an hour to get into the ready position about three miles off Point Loma. Then one of the Invader crew members went aloft to get the bird's eye view. But believe me, it's a team effort, so passengers study the horizons as well, looking for the all-familiar spout. Beginning in October, the California gray whale leaves its summer feeding ground in the Arctic seas and travels some 6,000 miles in search of the lagoons off Baja, California. It takes about two months for the first pods to reach the San Diego area. No one is really sure why the migration, although there's a good guess as to what triggers it. As far as we know, it seems to be the uh, shortening of the days up in the Arctic seas, and as a result, less sunlight and less food available. These are filter feeders, and the California gray in particular, a bottom filter feeder, using the sediments on the bottom. And as the productivity of the seas up there decreases, they probably start feeling the need to get into some warmer water where the uh, food is a little more plentiful. The California gray whale has been near extinction two separate times. And as you would guess, it was man that nearly wiped them out. First in the mid-1800s when commercial whalers discovered the lagoons of Baja, then again in the 1920s when the commercial whalers rediscovered the grays along California's coast. Because protection has been given to the gray whale, the population is estimated to be at about 16,000 now. Although plenty of eyes have been peeled, as of yet no luck, and it's almost time to turn back. The search continues. Okay, right now we're just looking for the spout of the whale. It's uh, very difficult to predict exactly where they are. We're right now in an area where we've seen them before, just off of San Diego's channel buoy number one here, and that's about three miles off of Point Loma. We do know that the whales use bottom contours, depth to the bottom, and uh, also distance off the coast to navigate. So maybe one reason we find them in this area. But once in the area, we still take a little bit of luck to actually find them. The Invader crew guarantees its passengers a whale find. If not, it's a free trip next time. But this time, we were lucky. We were close enough to get a good look, but never too close to interfere with that southern migration. This trip out, the encounter with the California gray whale, was a brief one, but it was well worth the effort. A trip like this offers one of those rare opportunities to share with nature and to view something firsthand that most people will never see. Leonard Buriel, 10 News, off Point Loma. He's in the Los Angeles area right now, preparing for its Rose Bowl encounter with UCLA on New Year's Day. We know who you like on that one. The Hawkeye Marching Band will be there too, but right now it's getting a look at America's finest city. And no, we don't mean Los Angeles. Ed Lindeman has the story. If ever there were a group of people dying to get into a pair of shorts and a t-shirt, it would be the members of the University of Iowa Hawkeye Marching Band. If you're wondering whether these young people from the nation's cold and snowy heartland are happy to be in sunny San Diego, consider this. The temperature when we left is about 20 degrees, but that was high because the temperatures we had previous to that when we left Iowa City were about 10 below. So it's just kind of treat out here. The Iowa but on this year's trip west, the Iowans decided they wanted to visit America's finest city before going to Pasadena. Anybody got any sunscreen? I don't know. Tonight, some of the band members will be performing at a Rose Bowl party for Iowa alumni at the Cafe Del Rey Moro. Tomorrow, more practice, then it's up to Disneyland for a parade. Finally this evening, when little Jessica Freeman was born, her doctors didn't think she would make it. There were a lot of problems, but today they call her the Miracle Baby. Mark Matthews reports. Happy birthday to you. It was a year ago today, here at UCSD Medical Center, Jessica was born eight weeks premature, an infection spread throughout her body and suffering from almost certain brain damage. But she managed to beat the odds in one of the most remarkable recoveries that doctors here have ever seen. This is one of the biggest surprises of my life, to see her looking as good as she's looking right now. She looks wonderful. Jessica dug into her very first birthday cake while her mother watched with obvious pride. Connie Holtzman likes to show off her daughter and has already got a trophy case full of prizes from baby beauty contests. I hope parents that have the preemies now 
can see this and know that there's still a lot of hope, no matter how sick the babies are. I don't think there's been too many that were sicker than Jessica. And if they can see what she's doing now, I think it'll help a little bit. Jessie's record on the beauty pageant circuit is two for two, also winning awards for best dressed and the best model. Today, she's just best messed. Mark Matthews, UCSD Medical Center. Goodbye. We All couldn't right. let you part. You say your goodbye without, without, without us joining in. What John was going to say is he's leaving the weekend edition of News 8 for the 6.30 show. He's been here nearly four years. We're glad he's staying on at News 8. But all of us on the weekend crew are going to miss him very much. He put a lot of extra effort into the weekend shows. It showed quite a bit in his work. Here are a few examples. A passerby saw it first. Legs dangling through the ceiling of the bank's lobby, not far from the new accounts desk. Police arrived and attached a type of leash to his foot, but this guy wasn't going anywhere. That was his problem. He was stuck in an apparent burglary attempt. Images are fused when one storm ends and another is coming. The black top of a parking lot has no beauty during the day, but is able to please the eye at night after a recent rain. Was the storm that visited part of what's to come? Perhaps. Or was it something that passed and stirred nothing more than a few trees? Is anybody here now? CPR! Yeah, I know. Okay, can you come down here just as long as you're breathing? Anybody else know CPR up here? Oh, they're coming. That's Veronica Acuna, a San Diego lifeguard whose summer job ended Saturday. However, as an employee at Anthony's Restaurant, she was back in action helping Virginia Secor, who fell off the Embarcadero. And the doctor who rushed to the woman's aid almost fell in himself. But there is one location in San Diego that seems to be the status signal, if you will, for some select pigeons. At 12th and Broadway, suspended over the intersection, is a three-story condo of sorts. Sheltered from the damp ocean breeze is a signal light occupied by several pigeons. The warmth of the light explains the attraction. The color does not. Yellow and red are always filled. Green is usually vacant. This seems to be the only signal in town where it happens. Nicely done. Very good <laughs> surprise, ladies and gentlemen. You got me on that. As I was saying before I was not so rudely interrupted, nearly four years with Doug Oliver, of course, when he's not on vacation, Jim Laslovic, and earlier Hal Clement, they have been special. Eight producers, more than 15 writers, and an excellent technical crew directed by Frank Myholer and Deborah Adler leave fond memories. Tomorrow I move to the 6.30 weekday edition of News 8, as Laz has already told you. My wife and I and our two daughters are looking forward to rediscovering complete weekends together as a family. A longtime friend and competitor, though, is Mitch Duncan. Mitch remains a friend, and now I'm happy to say he becomes a co-worker. He'll be here next Saturday to carry on the weekend coverage. You'll be in good hands with him. Thanks so much for being there. Good night. The Aztecs won only one of ten games before starting conference play. They finished fourth in their own holiday tourney, won by Memphis State. The Tigers are a perfect 11-0. Heck, they hardly worked up a sweat this weekend. Have you ever seen a coach more relaxed during a game than Dana Kirk of Memphis State? Where's all the screaming and shouting? Tigers didn't have much to hash over during timeout. Hey, it was time to boogie. And that's what they did on the court, too. They boogied all over North Carolina Charlotte from the opening tip when they lobbed it into seven-footer William Bedford, who added 12 more points before giving way to the subs. He earned the tourney's MVP title. Bench Baskerville Holmes joined Bedford on the all-tourney team with 13 points. Holmes pulled down a couple of early rebounds, and it was soon clear the 49ers were in deep trouble. The 10th-rated Tigers played everybody and still won it by 24, 106-82. Tigers are a homegrown team. And while the Aztecs have only one player on their roster from San Diego, the coach's son, Daryl, the Tigers have 10 out of 12 who played their high school ball right there in Memphis. The Aztecs could convince a few more to stay at home. The crowd for this tournament might have been bigger than just over 7,000. That was 7,000 for both nights total. Yeah, the Aztecs need to get a winning tradition going somehow. I know they were 23-8 and eight last year, but it didn't carry over. Fresno State coach Boyd Grant has averaged 25 wins a season the past five years, and sometimes their red wave numbers 5,000 on the road. When I went to Fresno uh, nine years ago, I, uh, I, I told the people that if we played hard, they had to support us, and if they would support us, we'd get better athletes. And I really believe that the same thing would happen here. I know that you have 
uh, other sports, and, and Fresno, we're the only show in town, but yeah, I really believe if the people would get behind uh, the Aztecs, that they would be surprised what they could do with, with great crowds, because better players want to come. Grant also starts a young team.